Okay, so I want to come and do a video for you guys today about violin setup. Because I know there's a lot of violin people out there that will buy a violin online, will be a lot for beginners, so parents buying for their kids, or if they want to decide they want to buy one and just buy one from online, this is the stuff you expect to see that needs to be done once you get it. Because most online retailers don't do a setup on it, especially if you're doing something like off of Amazon or some other place like that. Now, if you're buying it online from a shop, lots of those will be set up, and this is what they're doing to those violins to set it up. So I got in a batch of violins, I got in six of them, and I'm just going to go through what a violin setup takes, um, you know, kind of what you see from a factory to the actual finished product. Now let's talk about a factory setup. Now and this goes for violins, violas, cellos, basses, guitars, ukulele, almost all factories will leave the setup slightly high. Now the reason they do that is so they don't have to worry about it buzzing because if you have a buzzing instrument you know on the wall you know then it sounds a lot worse so they purposely leave those finish those uh, setups just slightly high and so I'm gonna be going through and just fine-tuning that now as instruments get cheaper they tend to leave them higher so be aware of that if you're buying the really cheap violin it's gonna be a quite a high you know setup because they haven't taken the time to even do a partial setup on this because that's part of what you're paying for. As the instrument goes down, it means less labor was involved. So let's walk through this. And uh, like I said, these are these are from a factory that I, I trust. And so they are a little high, but not real high. Um, and these are one of those where like you could you could honestly put the strings on it, and it would be okay. Um, but I prefer to have them set up properly. And so then when the customer comes in and tries them, they play beautifully. So these are only a $400 violin. That's the violin case and a bow. So it is not a really expensive violin. A lot of the really expensive violins like I get in um, will actually be completely unset. Um, they will actually come in and I will do all of the setup work myself. Because uh, I prefer it that way. It saves me money and then I end up with a product because I'm going to go through and reset them up anyway. So... This is how I do this with these factory, uh, you know, factory kind of student level ones. Uh, but yeah, come and let me show you how to set up a violin. So this is the case. I just took the, the case out of the plastic. Let's just open this up together and I'll show you what we get most of the time with a, you know, decent student violin. So open this up, it has a cover cloth on here. We got a wood bow, horse hair on it. Um, as you can see the violin, the bridge is not on it. Um, the bridge is actually tucked under here. Let's pull this out. Gonna move the case off to the side. And here is the violin. Now, as far as the violin goes, what you will see, if we can get to focus, there we go. Um, the violin, like I said, the of course, you know, made in China because that's where a lot of stuff is made from nowadays. Uh, so they put this over to, to protect the finish and there is the bridge underneath. Now I will be taking off these strings. These strings are really a, a cheap set. Um, this particular one does have ebony pegs, ebony fretboard, ebony, you know, well this is a, a composite tailpiece with the fine tuners built in. You can see one fine tuner there. And ebony chin rest. Put this in my cradle. That holds the violin from rocking. And let's have a look at this guy. So we're going to take and just pop this off. This pulls out around that fine tuner. Um, now you can see the tailpiece with the four, tine, four fine tuners built in. I'm going to loosen these pegs all the way because, like I said, I am changing these strings out. And uh, that is one very common thing you'll find. So these strings, these strings are super thin. Let's see, there is focus. These are super thin strings. Um, you know, they work. They they will they will get up to the right note, but they sound very thin and tinny. Um, you can see by these ball ends. These are these are a step up from a, from some of them I see. Some of these I see are really really cheap. Uh, so these aren't the worst, but they're not the best. So I'm gonna upgrade those. I usually do just because I like to have them sound a little nicer coil those up and lots of times I will actually just give these sets um, to one of the local schools uh, public school systems and they can just use these on their school instruments you know use them up because a lot of the you know a lot of the little beginner kids break them so I usually donate all those all right so right here in this little piece of paper 
Come on, focus on for me, and there we go. My camera is struggling lately. So in this paper, we have the violin bridge. Now this bridge, as you can see, is technically fit. Um, fit means that, uh, well, let me grab a blank. So, show you the difference. There we go. So this is a blank, and as you can see, so the, the feet are thicker and they're, you know, flat, and then the top is a lot flatter curve. It's also quite a bit larger, and that is so you can fit the violin bridge. So every violin bridge needs to be fit to the top curvature of the violin. So this one, the feet have already been fit, so I won't have to do that, that's nice. And then they have shaped it for height. And on this particular company, this height is, or I mean, this curvature is the right curve for their for their fingerboard. Um, and it, so it is a decent curve. They tend to be just a tad high, but that's okay. You know, like I said, if, if you were just, you know, you ordered one of these online and put the strings on, it would be okay. It's not a horrible action, but I can make it just a little bit better. But that is the difference between a fit in a unfit. So this is the blank. Now this is a Lux. This is a French bridge. Very nice. This is probably just a, a Chinese maple one, which is fine. They, they're they okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on these pegs. So pegs are, are a tapered, they are tapered in a tapered hole and so as you push them in they get tighter. That's how this works. That's how all these, uh, you know, wooden pegs like this function. So one thing they don't do on these is you can see how this is bright white wood in there. They don't use any kind of a peg compound. Um, and so in, in, especially like in my dry area, um, they will tend to get really grabby. They actually get too, they're too tight, too, have too much friction, and you can't hardly move them. Um, so I'm actually going to put what's called a, I cut, it's called a, that's a peg compound. I use this original uh the original hill peg uh we always call it peg dope but it's it's just a they call it peg compound anyway so this stuff it looks just like lipstick more or less um but it does have its you know waxes and um just a little fine grit in there so we're we're kind of making that somewhere between you know running freely and having still having enough grip so we're just going to apply it. I can see where the peg box wall rubs on that peg. So I put a little bit on there, a little bit around that spot, that end, and then I put it back in the peg and then just work it around. And so what that does is you end up with, so you don't really see it on the peg anymore and now that peg hole is now dark because that compound is all worked inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other three. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is this end pin. So you can see it here, the end pin is not seated all the way down against the bottom. And a lot of companies do this because they expect them to shrink just a little bit, which they will a little, um, but lots of times they're just sitting too far out. And so I'm going to do a little fitting on this as well. What we're going to do is take and pop that tailpiece off like that, pull this out, and there again, it's just a tapered pin. And so I'm going to take that same, I'm going to take a violin reamer, which is that same taper, and I'm just going to run it maybe about two turns. That's about all it's going to take. Test fit that, and there we go. So now as you can see, when that focuses, that is right up tight. You know, now it's all the way seated down. So that's what we want there, because this is this will be up against the player's neck. So the further out that sticks, the worse the, the player's going to feel it. And so now we're going to put that tailpiece back under there, clip it back on, and there we go. Now we're actually ready to look at the bridge. So they're going to flip this around, move you guys. Okay, so now we're going to take this bridge and we're going to fit it. So as you can see, it already fits to the top now, which is great. Um, so now we're going to take and we'll get the extension of the fingerboard. So I just take a, a little flat ruler, go right on there, put the bridge in the place it's supposed to be, and just make a little dent on the high and on the low. Whoops. Okay. 
I got the mark for it tipped. So it's right there and right there. Okay, so I have my two marks. I have a little mark right there and a little mark right there. That's my fingerboard extension. So now I'm going to take my template. Sorry, there we go. So I'm going to take my fingerboard template and I'm going to stick it right on that mark right there. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I get too close and it doesn't want to do it. So put that on the bottom. Make me a little mark right there. Do the same thing over here. And so the way this template is set up, it already gives me my string heights. And so I already know, come on baby, the distance I need to go up. So let me put the line across here while my camera has a really hard time focusing on this. I am looking into a new camera. I just don't know what that is yet. Anyway, so there is the amount that I need to cut down the bridge. So like I said, it's not much, just a little bit. And you can see it's just a little high all the way across. So I'm gonna take this now and we're gonna trim that off. I'm actually gonna use a sander and then thin this out just a little bit and then we'll shape this up and get this on the violin. Use a sander for this. A lot of, you know, I learned how to do this by hand and I can do it by hand, but a sander just makes it a lot faster. So hang on, sorry for the noise, uh, but let's, uh, let's get this done real quick. We need to take and mark our string spacing. So you can see on here, this gives you my string spacing. I'll transfer that onto the top of the bridge, and then we'll make our string space, or our string notches. I'm just going to use my uh, nut slot files, um, which are just gauged, um, you know, gauged files, to do this. So we're just going to start. You can see I have the four marks right across there. And we're just going to take and mark, just put some string slots in here. And they don't have to be very deep. But I do want them so I don't want them just flat. I want them actually kind of curved because that string is going to come up, over, and, you know, off the bridge. So I want a little bit of curve to them. And that way where the string will slide smoothly across that slot. And so I'm actually going to use some smaller files now for the lower one or for the next ones because these strings do get smaller as they go. And I can actually use this one. The center two are pretty much the same gauge. They're slightly different, but not enough that uh, they're both within this slot. And the last one obviously is a little thinner. It's a very fine string, just like that. Okay, now we're ready to put this on. Now we're looking at, now we're just going to put the strings on it, because that's where we're to. Um, there's a sound post in here, I will check the set up once I get the strings on, um, so I can hear the tone. But we are ready to go. So, we're going to take and gather up our strings. Here is the low G, and the low G goes, let's see, I'm going to move you, oh, I'm going to wind these back up. So these are the fine tuners, uh, sorry. These are the fine tuners, so these actually will, will help you fine tune the tone, or the note, uh, of your open string. And uh, so you want to wind those up so that you can use them some more. So also in these, come on baby, hard to focus on these black. So each of the, the strings have a ball end that actually go down in this little notch right there in those fine tuners, and they catch just like that. And then on this end, we're going to actually use that, see there's a hole in that peg. 
So we're actually going to put the string right in that hole. And then we're going to wind to the tip of the peg once or twice. Sort of like that. And then we're going to lap it over the string, just like that. And we're just going to wind that string up. Now I don't want it real tight yet because I still have to stand up the bridge. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put the, the next, the high E in. And uh, then we'll stand the bridge up. So now we're going to put in the high E. Same thing, go towards the tip of the peg once, and then across. And what that does is it keeps the, the string from sliding around the peg, kind of locks that string on. And put it in that notch and just kind of loose. Not tight enough to hold, but not too tight. Okay, now we're gonna stand up the bridge. Here we are. So the bridge we're actually going to take and just put right underneath those two strings and they're still slightly loose. Now the, there's two notches in the F-hole, I will show you this in a minute, but that's where the bridge placement goes. And see the high E has this little protector that goes on top of the bridge. I'll probably have to put that back on in a minute. That low G is a little loose, so what I'm going to take and just tighten that up just a little bit. I'm not even going up to full pitch. I just want to get enough, enough of a pitch to hold the place. Okay, now I'm going to add the next two strings. Four strings are on. I still need to tune it. And uh, normally, I would file these nut slots. But this particular violin, they already had them down low enough. Um, so I didn't actually have to file these. But that is one other thing you have to do sometimes, is actually file these the nut slots right here so the strings are closer. Like I said, on this particular one, I didn't have to. Um, this batch seems to be, the nut seems to be pretty good. I don't want to file them too deep. So, but that is something else that you do have to do occasionally. So let's tune this up. So I actually use an electronic tuner for this. Um, I just find it's really easy. This is one of the Snark tuners. Um, so it just tells me what note I'm at, and I need to tune it to what I want it to be. Oh, I gotta push in a little bit. Now that is one thing you will learn with violins. If the peg is slipping, it needs to be pushed in more. So let me turn that a little bit so maybe you guys can see it. So there's the E. Now this is going to be Okay, there's roughed in, it's going to be a little sharp so I need to come back and check. You can see the bridge is starting to tilt forward just slightly. So I'm going to move that back, stand that back up straight, just like that. And now you have your basic violin ready. A little out of tune still. These strings are going to stretch. See, they already dropped half, half a step. New strings stretch for a couple hours. It's like two hours of break in. See, I, that was sharp just a second ago. Now the other thing you have to check sometimes is there's what's called a sound post. So if you look inside this F-hole right here, you can see there's a wooden dowel. And that the placement of it to the bridge will change your tone a little bit. On this particular one, and when they're brand new like this, it's really hard to sometimes dial those in. Um, this one sounds pretty close. Um, I am going to adjust it just slightly. So I just moved it back just a little bit. 
I use what's called a sound post setter. It's a kind of a funky looking tool. That's its main purpose. Its only purpose. That rings a little bit nicer now. So that is basically it. I mean, that's right now that is a very playable instrument. Um, ready for the uh, school that is actually going to be purchasing this violin and I have a couple more of these for stock um, but I like I really enjoy using electronic tuners on this um, I know how to tune it by ear and I can use a bow and tune it but that's just so much faster and easier for me anyway so that is it and there's you know like I said that's that's the gist of it um, obviously if there if this were like an old violin that needed like fingerboard work and you know a new nut it would be a little more involved but these these you know from from new this is what your normal expectation is and like I said the only thing I didn't do that I normally would would be to adjust those nut slots right there this particular one did not need it um, and so I'm not gonna make it worse anyway there you go so there it goes guys that's uh, that's your basic of setting up a violin um, this is a full-size violin this is going to one of the local public schools. Uh, they have just purchased two of these. I um, already set up one, and then I thought, hey, let's show you guys how this works. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will be doing more. If you want to see other orchestral stuff, cellos, basses, violas, um, all similar process, just larger scale. Basses are fun. I'm actually working on a bass right now that I can show if you guys would like to see that. Um, a big stand-up bass. It's had a very rough life. Um, anyway, it is a very cool base, but it, it's a little rough on the edges. But I appreciate everybody, uh, you know, following along with this. And uh, any comments, like I said, I'm happy to read them. I look through most of them. And, uh, yeah, if you guys want to see anything, you know, repair-wise, orchestral, guitar, anything like that, leave them a comment. I do got the guitar setup uh, videos. Um, I'm starting to plan those out because I've got the 36 Washburn. Um, I'm going to be doing and I figure I can do kind of one of both on that one and uh, I will show you those. Anyway, we will see you guys on the next one.